Today, we're going to look at the Panasonic A6 motor, which has a 23-bit single-turn absolute encoder and 16-bit 16 16-bit multi-turn. Uh, we have the Zenus Compact here, which is appropriately sized for a lower current motor. Um, I've got this 400-watt uh, Panasonic motor, kind enough uh, kind enoughly provided from Olympus and the Panasonic's guys sent me their small motor. Um, Panasonic also sent me the uh, the cable with the with the battery for storing the multi-turn absolute. Uh, this of course is not necessary if you don't need multi-turn absolute and you just want to run from single turn absolute. Um, I've got the stow adapter plugged in to bypass the safety 24 volts powering the keep alive motor power connected with the uh, frame ground and uh, ac power i'm running on 120 these are 200 volt motors so so really you should run it off at 230 um, but you can get near the rated speed with only 120 so if it's a slow application then no problem and of course the feedback here um, i'll show you how to wire that so the Panasonic motor is conveniently labeled with some of the critical information. Uh, I like to get all the motor specification data, but sometimes that takes a little longer to, to pull that out from the, from the manufacturer. Uh, I, I couldn't find it on the web, but uh, this got me going, uh, just knowing the, the rated uh, current and the, the, the case of E and, and the case of T. Um, we can see this, the little motor is a 100 watt motor. It's rated for 200 volts. It's got the 23, 23 bit absolute encoder, which of course is multi-turn 65536 turns of multi-turn information. And uh, it's, it's the A6 Panasonic motor. So I was able to get things going just from the, the tag data. Um, I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but the, one of the, after the wiring, uh, we're going to talk about uh, how to handle 23 bits. So for the Copley drives, we show how to connect to the Absolute A encoders. And there's various Japanese manufacturers that use the Absolute A, and Panasonic is one of them. The A5 is a 17-bit. The A6 is a 23-bit. That's really the only difference that I saw, except for maybe the motor's a little shorter stack, which is cool. But if we look at the hooking up an absolute A encoder to the Copley, there's uh, data, which is bi-directional. Um, the Xenus Compact has S and S naught for data, and then the newer generation drives just take the data in on A and A naught um, on the primary or secondary input of the, like for example, the AEV or APV module. And you can see the uh, motor gets a uh, battery, uh, which is, of course, not necessary. You don't need multi-turn. We can just run off a single turn and ignore the battery. Um, and then there's five volts to power the encoder. So this was the wiring information based on the, the wire colors. And we can see there's two wires for plus five volts and two wires for ground that powers the encoder. Um, there is a, a battery connection. Um, this may be to to uh, charge the battery, and this would be like the battery connection to provide battery power to the feedback device. And then the data, of course, is coming uh, and, and going. And also, there's a frame ground. So you can see that the shield uh, is connected to the frame. Um, I, did, I did not see an inner shield here, but if there was an inner shield, that would go to the signal ground. So I connected CME version 8.0 using a SER-USB-RJ11 USB to Copley USB to serial adapter. And uh, in the beginning, we do the setup for this motor. Uh, we'll enter the information about the motor. This one's brushless rotary with no brake. It's a Panasonic Absolute A, so we can pick that from the list. Uh, if it was an incremental A, that, that would be an option too. 
And this is a 23 bit with 65536 turns. There's no ignore bits on this one. We could ignore the battery, but I've got a battery here today, so I'm going to use it. Um, I'll also note that the CME doesn't have the ability to downshift the encoder yet. And that's something that we'll do over the ASCII port. If you notice, a 23 bit is like 8 million counts per rev. Sometimes the only thing we get with that many counts is just a larger following error. Um, if you go really slow, that might be a benefit, or if you need the resolution, that might be a benefit. Um, but never have more resolution than you need, so we're going to downshift it to 19 bits so that we don't overflow the velocity uh, parameters. Uh, you know, 6,000 RPM is going to be 100 times this. That's like 8 billion um, or 800 million counts per rev, almost a billion counts per rev. That'll overflow the velocity register. Until the firmware develops with a floating point, we'll just downshift for now. So 19 bits at 500,000 counts per rev is pretty respectable. Um, so after we get the basic configuration set, if there were CRC faults, we could ignore them, but I don't like to ignore CRC faults. I didn't get any CRC faults. I guess if there's a lightning strike, you might get one, so you could ignore one with a window. Um, and then for stopping, there's you know there's a uh, a controlled stop. Um, this is just going to be position mode Ethercat, and that's the configuration. Um, so these two parameters, one is the encoder downshift. So I'm going to downshift from 23 to 19 bits. So I'll downshift four bits. So this is the parameter using the ASCII uh, command line. I can see that I've set, um, so get RAM 0x1a8 gives me a value of four. Uh, if I use an S for set, I can set both RAM and flash, so F for flash. Um, so that's one parameter to set. And then the other parameter, uh, well, the counts per rev, 0x62, that's not in RAM, that's only in flash. So you can see I've set the counts per rev. Um, this allows the uh, position loop to be closed at the correct counts as set by the downshift. So we can tell it what it is because that's the data that's coming from the encoder. Okay, so the basic uh, setup would normally take all the information about the Panasonic. I've got the MHMF042 uh, motor I'm connected to. That's the larger of these Panasonic A6 motors. Um, they're 10 pole motors. They have a little bit of inertia, some peak and continuous torque. A uh, torque constant based on Newton meters divided by amps. I just put that in right from the, the, the label there. I just took the Newton meters and divided by the amps. Um, you, you also see that you could, if you didn't know your, your back EMF constant, <clears throat> you could copy the volts per radians per second over. That'll give you the true volts per kRPM. I know it says less in the, in the data sheet, but that could be winding to neutral. So what do you really need to go 3,000 RPM? You're going to need 150 volts, rectified 120, plus some IR drop. So I measured the resistance at 6 ohms. So at a few amps, that's going to be <clears throat> some more voltage for IR drop. So no, you can't go 3,000 RPM with 120 volts AC rectified. You'll need 230. And I just gave a guess for the inductance. And 6,000 RPM, this thing can go that fast. That's not the rated speed, but um, for short durations, I'm sure the, the watts coming out of the motor will be fine with that, if you have sufficient bus voltage to do that. Um, the alternative is to use the ratings label and just enter the data and use the characterize and tune. Um, this is, if you don't have the date, all the specy data, you can run through this auto tuning thing. but you have to downshift the encoder first before you do that, because otherwise the speeds will be too slow. So before I go through the tuning, I'm just going to show that we were able to hit 
about 2,500 RPM with 120 volts AC rectified. Um, I used a little S curve, and I, I I haven't really tuned up the system in the current in the current loop, but I did the velocity loop tuning and left the uh, position loop at defaults. But I just want to show that we can tune uh, for a very good move and settle to within plus or minus uh, like 100 counts. And when the move is done, it's settled. Um, so I adjusted the integral to get this to land nicely. Um, but I, you know, I was told that this motor is, is more coggy than the A5, but honestly, I, I can turn the shaft of the motor and it feels real smooth. Um, and the error while we're moving is, is really tight. So I, I'm not sure that there's any cog. I guess if we went really slow, we might see some cog, um, but the counts are high and we can compensate for that. So don't worry about any, if anybody says it's a coggy motor, it is not a coggy motor. Um, and you can see that even with uh, this huge uh, resolution, uh, we're plus or minus a few counts for steady state once it once it gets in. Um, so that's pretty good for 19 bits of like 524, 288 counts per rev. This was a, a 10 rev move. Um, taking a quick peek at the gains here, I just left the position at default. If we had a large mass, we'd bring the PP down. Um, I, I tuned up VP and VI. Uh, I also moved the the filter from a, a, a two pole to a one pole. So on the V loop, I picked one pole and hit apply. That gave me the ability to increase the uh, the VP a little bit. I tuned the velocity loop integral based on the, the settling here. Um, so that's the default for this. So let's take a look at the current loop tuning and see if we get a little bit more current loop bandwidth out of it. So auto setup checkbox, apply to the current, hit start. You can see it uh, could use a little bit more. These were calculated values based on not having any data. So I like to double things until they overshoot. And then um, there's the overshoot, cut it in half. And that should be sufficient for bandwidth. Let's check out our bandwidth, see what we get. One kilohertz of current loop bandwidth. That's that's pretty good. I like 1.2 plus or minus 200. But so taking a look at the move again um, with a higher current loop bandwidth we, we i did notice that the, the steady state got a little better plus or minus account so maybe it maybe it does help um we could increase the integral a little bit and try to get to steady state a little quicker so oh, that overdid it and we're still within a 100 count window, but uh, you can see when the integral is high, it, it overcompensates a bit. Um, this motor is not bolted down, so it does move a little bit. So there's our steady state tuning, and uh, all's good with the Panasonic A6. Thanks for watching.